Welcome to the Intuitive Body Foodie Network, changing the way you think about food. Coming back to this topic of prolapse, I've received a few messages from viewers asking me like, what's going on with you with that? In case you don't know the backstory on this, around 2012, 2013, I started to notice I was having some issues down there. Things were tight, things were painful. Started using lube and it wasn't helping. Noticed that I was having to go to the bathroom a lot. I was leaking when I was out walking. I constantly had to wear a liner and I know that's not normal. So I thought like, what's going on? And then one day I went for a walk and I, by the time I got home, I was completely saturated. Thank God it was dark and like to save me the embarrassment, it was just horrifying. And I kept asking spirit, like what is going on with my body? And by the time I got into the driveway, I heard the word prolapse, but of course I didn't know what prolapse was. I'd never heard the word before. Long story short, I went to the doctors. She examined me, sent me to a gynecologist. That took a year. That doctor didn't want to see me, referred me to another gynecologist. That took nine months. For whatever reason, that doctor decided he couldn't be my doctor. He then referred me to another doctor who was actually a urologist. I don't know why they sent me to a urologist for prolapse, but I didn't even know what a urologist was. So I just thought I was going to somebody that knew what they were doing. It turns out that that lady gave me a misdiagnosis. She told me I had triple prolapse and that I was at the final stages, stage three and a half or four? That was in 2017. She told me that there had been no medical advancements in over 80 years and that it was a pessary or nothing. And I thought, if I have to use a pessary, that means I have to come in every three months because you have to insert it, take it out. And my life is just far too busy. And I've got better things to do with my time than to be in here every three months. So I just said, no, thank you. And then eventually, you know, it started to show because I got a big bump and it started to show more and more. And I went to my doctor and I said, look, something's got to happen here. This was in 2019, by the way. My doctor then set an appointment for me to go to the hospital to speak to a surgeon about having this surgically corrected. And then COVID hit. And then 2022 came around and I thought, well, nobody's helping me and nobody's said anything. And I finally said like, maybe I need to pursue this again because it seems like nobody else really gives a flying monkey. So I went back to my doctor. Well, I tried to, but she's never in her office. So then I had to go and look for a new doctor. And then I finally found a new doctor. That doctor referred me to a male gynecologist who told me that I didn't have prolapse, sent me for an ultrasound. The ultrasound said, yeah, you do have prolapse. Then the doctor said, well, yeah, you do have prolapse. And I said, well, do I or don't I? Because you said I don't, but the guy said I do. And it was very confusing. And I thought I need a second opinion. So then I went back to the doctor and I got a second opinion to another male doctor who said, it's okay, honey, There's you're fine. There's nothing going on down there. And I'm like, are we looking at the same thing here? Because like, give me a mirror and I'll show you what I'm looking at. What are you looking at? I don't know. I think he was looking at somebody else's vagina. Turns out he was actually looking at my vagina, but decided that, you know, just like the first doctor said, you know, you're old and just deal with it. Don't worry about it. Down the road, you'll need surgery. So just live your life until then. And I thought, is this really our medical system? So I went back to the doctor. Turns out he wasn't really my doctor. And so I had to go through the process of getting a new doctor. So I finally got a new doctor and he sent me to a female gynecologist who then said, oh yeah, you do have prolapse, but it's just small. It's in the beginning stage. It's just your bladder and we can do this, that, and the other. So let me tell you what this, that, and the other is. And then let me tell you what my reaction was and why I'm not doing it anymore. So it's probably a really good thing that I didn't go ahead with the pessary, such as what was recommended by the very first doctor, because apparently I have a frontal prolapse, which means it's tilting to the front. Well, according to this last doctor that I saw, and had I have actually taken that first doctor's advice, it would have pushed that even further forward which means that it would have progressed it a whole lot faster, which only goes to prove that you really should trust your intuition, which I did and I'm glad I did because otherwise could have made things a whole lot worse. The final doctor suggested that I use vaginal dilators. My cervix has shrunk and it's very thin. So a dilator is sort of like a vibrator, except for it's not the same size. It's usually a lot smaller. It uh, has no battery and it's not for the purpose really of pleasure. It's more for strengthening 
the walls of the cervix, because the cervix is a muscle, also to stretch it. And so similar to how when you're lifting weights, like say you're doing a bicep curl, and it creates micro tears in the muscle, when the muscle heals, it gets thick keloid scarring, which tends to thicken the muscle, which makes it stronger, but it also makes it bigger. Kind of a similar thing happens when you use a dilator in your cervix and it helps to expand it. But that's a whole process and I have not been diligent with that. The other thing that she did is she gave me a prescription for E-string. What is E-string? It's a little round rubber ring with a coil inside it that contains estrogen on time release. So here's the thing it's synthetic and what i know about my body is that my body does not do well on synthetic medication so for example i was put on levothyroxine which is a synthetic thyroid hormone for the thyroid and i was on that for seven years and my levels never ever stabilized they were just like all over the map and i went to the doctor and i said then why am i on this if it's not working and i quit and i've never taken synthetic anything since then. According to this doctor that prescribed the E-string to me, I should not have any sort of side effects, but I was having side effects. I was feeling nauseous, my body was retaining water, I was suffering from headaches. I mean, I had pretty much all the symptoms of the side effects that you're not supposed to have according to this doctor. And I had already intuitively known that that was what it was, but I kept ignoring it and I kept thinking well maybe I just have a cold because you know my throat's sore but Dom's not sick I mean usually he gets sick and then several days later I get sick and I'm like how come you're not sick and I've got this sore throat and I'm tired and I have all these other symptoms that's when it finally hit me that oh my gosh my intuition has been telling me that this thing that I have inside me it's actually harming me so I took it out I took it out and I called my doctor that same night and of course my doctor's office didn't get back to me for a few days and they're like well that's not supposed to cause you know those symptoms and it sounds like you've got issues with your hormones and I kind of already knew the next sentence was going to be maybe you need hormone replacement therapy and I thought if that's what they're going to tell me I need to cut them off now because they're already giving me hormones my hormones were fine before they gave me this and now my hormones are out of whack so then that tells me that this synthetic hormone is throwing my hormones and everything else about my body out of whack. I guess it's been almost a month since I've removed the e-string and unfortunately I have massively suffering from hot flashes and I haven't had hot flashes since 2019, 2020, I don't know. I went on a carnivore diet for a year and that took care of all of that. I stopped having hot flashes but now I'm back to having hot flashes and I know it's the result of the e-string. So the problem with that is that I don't know if I can fix this because I don't know how long synthetic hormones stay in the body. I don't know how to get rid of them. I don't know if water fasting will take care of that. I don't know if a carnivore diet will take care of that. I don't know if cilantro will take care of that or if activated charcoal will take care of that. My diet is currently about 85 to 90 percent fermented foods. I don't know, will fermented foods eliminate synthetics from my body? That's a journey that I'm going to have to go down this year because this body is organic. It's not designed for synthetic materials. I suppose like the earth, it can handle a little bit, but a lot, I think, can end up making it really sickly. And thankfully, when I look back on all the years that I've been being treated by medical doctors, I haven't really allowed for long periods of time or even for large doses of synthetic materials other than the levothyroxine, which, <laughs> you know, that's when it probably all started with my hormones, right? Why did they even put me on levothyroxine to begin with? Well, the story of levothyroxine is that I had just given birth. I was postpartum depression and I was extremely tired. And according to the doctor, I needed thyroid medication. But of course, years later, after I had a different doctor, the doctor reviewed my medical history and said, why were you on levothyroxine? You should have never been on this in the first place because they said my thyroid 
wasn't quite optimal. Was I a, a square that they were trying to force into a circle, like a one size fits all? You know, you should be here, and if you're not here, then there's something wrong with you. There's always something wrong with me because I'm not exactly like everyone else. And I'm not sure why medical doctors think that every single human body needs to be the same. Like whatever happened to bio-individuality, I wonder. So maybe it was a levothyroxine that started screwing up my hormones in the first place. And maybe that's why I had such a visceral reaction when I was put on synthetic estrogen again. So how long is this going to take, this process of recovery? I don't know. But I will keep you posted. So here's the thing about that little story that I just told. If you have a vibe about something, do not ignore it. Don't. And if your medical doctor tells you something, get a second, get a third, get a fourth, get a fifth opinion. Go online and do research. You know, for years I was told I had triple prolapse and I was in the final stages. And you know, to this day, I don't know. They say it's prolapse, but is it? They say it's bladder prolapse, but is it? And I'm only at the beginning stages, but is it? I don't know. So, you know, from last year to this year, I'm really no more in the light than I was. I'm still kind of in the dark. <laughs> but here's the thing. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with trusting myself, trusting intuition, and trusting my body. Because my body has never lied to me yet. But, you know, Thoughts that I have will lie to me all the time. That's why I trust my body more. According to the doctors, I'm at first stage prolapse of bladder. And, you know, just go live your life and have a gay old time. And, you know, hopefully down the road, we'll still have a medical system. And if you need something, well, you'll probably pay through the nose for that because, you know, we're not going to have health insurance by then. Not the way the Trudeau NDP backed Liberal Party here is going in Canada. I mean, they just love to spend, spend, spend on everything else except for what's really necessary. But, you know, that's just my point of view. Sometimes I get a little too vocal. I know, I'm sorry. So where do I go from here? Well, in 2018, I already started to make massive changes in my life. I don't hike for 8 and 10 hours a day anymore. I don't carry a heavy backpack when I go. Well, that's not entirely true because in July, I think it was, of 2022, I went hiking. Well, I thought I was going to go hiking for a couple of months, and I was carrying like 50 pounds on my back. Well, that was a huge mistake. Backpack's a bit heavy. Well, it turns out that I am not able to do this long trek. I can't carry the weight. It's too hard on my body. And yeah, so I don't do that anymore either. I've already made a lot of lifestyle changes. I don't stand for copious hours on end. I stretch a lot. In particular, all of the muscles and tendons around the pelvis area through yoga asanas. But that's essentially where I'm at. Like, you know, kind of back at square one <laughs> of self-care because it just seems to work better. And what will I do down the road? Should this get worse? I don't know. Sometimes you just have to cross that bridge when you get there. So thanks for asking, and I hope this answers all your questions. If, for those of you that have been curious as to where I am, if you are suffering from any type of prolapse, and if you'd like to share whatever you feel like you want to share, by all means, that's what the comment section below is for. Thanks for watching, and until I see you in a future video, ciao for now.